Cal's ASCII phonetic semi-alphabet, COPSA for short, is an ASCII encoding of the IEP created in 2022 by Cal, who is me. It was made due to dissatisfaction with the currently most widespread ASCII encoding, XSAMPA. The main points where I disagree with the XSAMPA are. First, it was based on a mostly West European transcription system, SAMPA, before becoming international. SAMPA's smaller scope meant it didn't need to use digraphs, which gives XSAMPA weird holdover choices such as capital Q for the open back rounded vowel, or open brace for the near open front vowel. Secondly, it uses characters too liberally, as seemingly random and sometimes with questionable logic. Even ignoring SAMPA's holdovers, you still have stuff like Acute for palatalization, a holdover from a different system. 5 for the dark L, because 5 was just left over, despite there being 3 other different ways to write it by simply using a diacritic. Greater than backslash and lesser than backslash for the slashed glottal stops. 7 for the close midback unrounded vowel, on the grounds it is, and I quote, the 7th cardinal vowel. Literally all the diacritics, where to begin. T for breathe I voice, E for VLR pharyngealization, C for less rounded, Q for retracted tongue root, the list goes on. Third, it is confusing at points. Using the underscore S tie bar and diacritic introduction is bound to cause problems, and using the same symbol for roticity and ridge reflection, despite technically not being ambiguous, is insanity. Fourth, it looks ugly. This one is a bit more personal, but mixed case, underscores everywhere in numbers and punctuation constantly being used as letters don't please my eyes. And fifth, it's made by a British Esperantist. COPSA, I think, fixes these problems, by First, being designed as international from the start, using a global distribution of phonemes as a base rather than an European one. Second, Attempting a more consistent logic to the choices of symbols, refusing to use weird substitutions. Third, avoiding ambiguous symbols, giving each symbol in the IP its own code, distinct from all others, with only one technical exception, the velarization and pharyngealization diacritic, though that one shouldn't even be its own diacritic, considering there's already two diacritics that do these jobs separately. Fourth, separating symbols for symbol jobs and letters for letter jobs. Numbers kind of play in both teams, as there's not enough letters to go around. Fifth, I am Brazilian, and am not and will never be an Esperantist. Comps's rules. Letter values. The lowercase 26 letters keep their IP values. Certain symbols are reserved for clearing multiple rows. Exclamation marks the clicks. Ampersand marks retroflexion. Open brace marks adjectives. Closed brace marks implosives. Side note, open bracket is the dental diacritic, more on that later, so exclamation open bracket is the dental click. The uppercase letters, in their majority, are the most useful neighbor of their lowercase letters. I, Y and U are their near closed counterparts. E and O are their open mid counterparts. A is its back counterpart. S, Z, N, L, G and X are backed, into ESH, is, AGMA, turned Y, Cap G and G. P, B, C and K become fricatives. T and D become dental fricatives. J becomes plosive. R becomes a tap. H becomes voiced. Though if you are picked for aesthetic. M and W represent right leg turned M and turned M. Q represents the reverse glottal stop. V represents the turned V. The question mark is used for the glottal stop, the as sign for the schwa and the dollar sign for the lateral alveolar fricative. To cover for the small amount of symbols in ASCII, the asterisk can be used as a kind of general purpose modifier. It's the bar through bar di, bar du, slash to and bar do. The other letter of the ligature is ash, ethyl and cap ethyl. The loop of ram's horns. The turning of reverse T and turn script. It backs M, N and N into labiodental, palatal and juvular. It's the curly tail on cursive V, curly L, curly C, curly Z and curly J. It's the hook on hooked V. It flips turn W, turned H, turned R and inverted cap R. It's the barred through barred H, barred reverse glottal stop and barred glottal stop. And turns cap B and cap L small caps. Finally, 
Some of the numbers fill in the gaps where the obvious letter is taken and using a different letter would be misleading. Looking at you, capital F for labiodental nasal. The numbers do still have some logic to them. 2 is the alveolar lateral tap, being roughly shaped like an upside down lowercase r. 3 is the open mid central unrounded vowel, and 3 is its rounded counterpart, due to its shape. 4 is the uvular drill, as it slightly resembles capital R. 5 is the SJ sound, because the symbols are a little similar. 6 is the voiceless epiglottal fricative or pharyngeal trill, as H is almost the number 6. And 9 is the near open central vowel, as 9 resembles A when inverted. 7, 8 and capital F go unused in COPSA, they're reserved for future use, which is a fancy way of saying I'll figure it out later. Diacritics and suprasegmentals. If you've kept track, you'll notice many of the punctuation symbols weren't used. They were reserved for diacritical functions. Diacritics are placed after the main letter. Zero is voiceless, and one is voiced. Lesser than and greater than show advanced and retracted tongue, and asterisks change them to tongue root. Plus and minus show raised and lowered tongue. Tilde shows nasalization. Underscore works as the tie bar, both for affricates and double articulation. Percent is centralization, and adding an asterisk makes it mid-centralization. Hashtag marks syllabic consonants, adding an asterisk makes it mark non-syllabic vowels. Carrot has no meaning by itself, serving as a kind of diacritic connector. It represents all superscript diacritics, meaning. Carrot H shows aspiration. Carrot W labialization. Carrot J palatalization. Carrot capital K velarization. Carrot capital Q pharyngealization. Carrot and nasal release. Carrot L lateral release. In addition, the carrot is extended to the following. Carrot Y shows increased roundedness, and carrot I shows decreased. Carrot 3 marks lingual labials. Carrot R rotics. Carrot open bracket marks dental. Carrot closed bracket marks apical. Carrot closed parenthesis marks no audible release. The equal sign marks voicings. With a colon it is breathy voice. With a tilde it is creaky voice. Open bracket closed bracket marks laminal. And the last few are used for the suprasegmentals. Apostrophe and comma mark primary and secondary stress. Colon marks long, adding an asterisk makes it half long, double quote marks extra short. Backslash marks minor groups, and doubling it marks major ones. Periods mark syllable breaks. Semicolons mark linking. The vertical bar marks tones. Bar caret and bar v are global rise and fall. Bar plus and bar minus mark downstep and upstep. Bar 0 through bar 4 are the simple tone letters. Bar 0 is extra low, bar 1 is low, bar 2 is middle, bar 3 is high and bar 4 is extra high. To combine them, a second bar must be added to close the bracket. So rising tone is bar 1 3 bar, not just bar 1 3. Bar 5 through bar 9 are reserved for shortening contour tones, which must be declared earlier. Diacritics are always placed directly after the letter they modify, excluding the stress markers, which come directly before. Brackets For the brackets, use K before each to indicate you are using COPSA. Similar to the IPE, broad transcription is in slashes. Narrow is in brackets, indistinguishable is in single parenthesis, and obscured is in double parenthesis. Prosodic notation uses double brackets. Despite not being proper IPE, putting an asterisk before the K indicates the word is reconstructed. And those are all the letters. I might make an extended version to include the extended IPE, but this is it for now. There's a Google spreadsheet linked in the description. Thanks for watching.